Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Hoskins. I'm the Vice Chairman of Herefordshire FAU Council and I'd like to welcome you to our podcast, Listening with You Council. I'd like to introduce you to Ethan Edwards, Louis Baker and Scott Russell, who's joining us, joining us from Herefordshire FA. Our, our topic this week, what we're going to talk about is disability. <laughs> What does having a disability mean to you as a young person? What it means to me is, so basically, you're 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 just like a normal person, basically, but you adapt to what 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 that struggle is. You adapt to it. What about you, Dan? Um, what what I t- what I tend to do is I I um. I just see myself as an old person. I, I don't like like give it all my worries and woes and all that. I just see myself as a normal person living day to day life. And yeah, I'm just unique. I'm just one of a kind. I always say to people. I think I think for me and and from a Harris FA point of view, it's 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 to have a disability make you're no different to um, anybody else, any other uh, person, especially within football. Um, there isn't a hierarchy. Um, no one's better or worse than anyone else um, and it's about basically um, you know giving people with a disability the same opportunities and chances as everybody else. Did having a disability affect you growing up? When I was little I was going to play football because I couldn't run fast like like 100 miles per hour like when I was always like it's the coach go you two lads pick teams and because I used to get picked last people used to moan that I was on the team because I was so slow but I used it I used my abilities to adapt it to be better because I used to play goalkeeper I used to be like a, a tough defender I used to know I, I can do this. I was the slowest um, and people just wanted, wanted me to get involved and like they were slagging me off or I did just like saying you're not quick enough get quicker and i'm like well just take me for who i am everybody used to annoy me and swear at me for you know no apparent reason when i was playing football when i was growing up because they thought i wasn't someone special but i really am and i can tell that did your disability impact you when you were at school Oh, rugby, football, cricket, rounders, javelin, all of that lot. Yeah, cool. Uh, what about the rest of you guys? But with me, I couldn't do rugby because of my condition. Dan, what about yourself? Um, I'd say it was a mixture at my school because it depended on the PE teacher. If I knew about, about the disabilities I had, had and what I needed, what I could have not do, they were quite fine yet. Just do this part but other than that is i've experienced some like like i've had like college for example if i could i get bad knees if i knew on the floor too i've got to stand up so, oh. yeah. I, I i'd want it as a quote a ta call me lazy could, could i need to stretch my knees call me lazy i've had all sorts of manner of different paths but i think mm-hmm. it's all, all goes down to education like the education path if 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 the teachers could be educated and educate the students, I think the world the world would be a better place. Have you experienced bullying due to your disability? How did you deal with it? I've had some experience which made me like uh, afraid to go to school. I've had that I've had bullying to that extreme. I've had bullying where like people pick me up on the way I walk, or because I wear pedro boots, like people pick me up on that. I think. If you could pick me up on one thing, then I must be pretty awesome. But well, I think the yeah. range of the bullying is because I lost my man about eight years ago now. I, I'd allowed to say a really nasty thing, which made me change as a person. But I knew because I, I had the right support, I could go to them and say, look, I need help with this. This is not good for me mentally. Then they, they managed to sort it out straight away. But it all depends on that, that, that path of support that you have, then you know you're safe then. Yeah. Uh, Lou, what about you? Have you experienced any, any bullying? 
Um, yeah, people used to say, you know, what you like, and they used to, like Dan, they used to abuse my walking and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, how how did it how did it affect you, Lou? How did it make you feel? It didn't affect me good. So like I was feeling down, and like when the um, bidding incident happened at the co-op and Lipster, I was saying I didn't want to go to school. Everything. Mm. But how how do you feel now? Now you're a bit older. Um, better because the bully who bullied me at school has now gone. He's Birmingham way. Okay. So he's gone. And what about you guys? How how do you feel now? Um, you know that you're older um, about bullying. To be honest, if if you did it again, I'd just report it. Be more be more mature about it. Mm. I think for although me, I, I was in primary school and that I did the right things, but it's just being more mature about the situation and taking it into my own hands if that makes sense yeah absolutely and dan you you were gonna say something oh, yeah um i think as a grown older i sort of like took it as a duck in the water's back that that sort of saying but i think it, i knew if i got really extreme bullying on the street that i'd go i'd go to the police say look this has happened just to make you aware cases persons might do to somebody else but i think it's all about raising awareness and educate from a very very young age to now it doesn't matter how old you are, as long as you get the right education about the, uh, raising awareness, then you'll be fine. And, and I think from a from a Heritage FA point of view and a County FA point of view, um, it's basically, you know, um, knowing in, in football, if anything was to happen with bullying or, or anything like that, that you know the pathway and, and who to report things to. So if that be your club welfare officer, league welfare officer, uh, your coach, your manager, you know, it's important that um, y you you bring it to the attention um, because it's better to do that than to just brush it under the carpet. What's it like to coach or play football within the disability sector? Me and another coach look after um, Hinton CP, Para CPFC. And, and what uh, kind of disabilities are in that team? All sorts, literally all sorts. Mm. Do they enjoy it? Yeah, they enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. And what about uh, you, Lou? You do some uh, football as well, um, play, and do you coach as well? Well, Ethan's the main coach for us as well, Scott. Yeah. So. Yeah. And what? And who do you play for, Lou? We play for Lads Club. Yeah. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, our boys enjoy it. They're all good lads. Brilliant. And Dan, what about yourself? I know you say that you have uh, you don't play at the moment, but um, is it something that you might want to get into? Because um, I've always saw myself as a good coach and figure like trying to inspire people to go up through the ranks. Like everywhere I go, I always try to leave a good impact on everybody and hopefully, hopefully guide them on the right path to success, whatever they, they want to do. What do you know about the Three Counties Ability Counts League? What I found out is the Three, the three Counties Disability League, it, it's, it's amazing what the work they've done. I've heard from the Her Herefordshire Effort Football Association, uh, it's amazing work, huge rep representation and the, the dedication and trust is amazing at this world and, I, and I'd highly recommend it to everybody. What advice would you give to other young people with a disability? Point them in the right direction and give them as much advice as I can. And then if they still need help to, to progress from what I've given them, then I'll point them in the right direction from there. Um, Dan, have you got anything to add with that one? If uh, someone come up to me and said they experienced bullying, I'd, I'd sit them down and say, "What's wrong?" I listen to all their, I listen to their problems. So that I've experienced as well. You're a unique person. You don't let anyone get you down. Make sure you know the right guide way, right pathway to know who you're going to go and talk to about your problems and who you want to help you stop this bullying and stop all the all the trouble that you have in your life. We're, we're from from outside bullying you. You're unique. And you're an amazing person.
And Lou, any advice if anyone uh, was struggling because they have um, a disability? So pretty much they can do anything, but they're the leader. Yeah, they're inspired. Do they put their mind to, basically? Yeah. And would you get them involved in football? Oh, definitely, yeah. Get anybody involved. If you've been affected by anything talked about on the podcast, you can go on our website at www.harryfitcherfa.com for further information. I'd like to thank you all for listening. Uh, thank you to Ethan Edwards, Louis Baker and Scott Russell for coming. Okay. And look forward to you all at the next podcast.